Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And today we're going to be learning about, let's see here, buttons, text boxes, more on exception handling, math and assignment operators, as well as how to close the form as well, which will be at the very end of the tutorial. Okay, so the one thing I want to go through really quickly because I didn't exactly explain it too well in the last tutorial is the difference between declaring and initializing an, uh, a variable. So this right here is declaring a variable. So if I just get rid of this right here, just keep the semicolon at the end. That's declaring a variable. And initializing it is actually setting it equal to something. So as you could have guessed, what I've been doing is, well, both at the same time. So I'll just cut this and paste. Okay, oh, too many semicolons. Okay, so I just declare, anytime you can declare and initialize at the same time, try to do it. And you know what? I was thinking about it. I should show you some more data types. So other integer data types will include bytes. Uh, what else is there? I, I put some um, down. There's short. There's long. And so, but we'll just be using int. Uh, other floating type uh, would include, let's see here, float itself, which is smaller. And there's decimal and I think that's about all I wanted to show you but primarily for the integer data types we'll just use integer and for the floating types we'll just use double uh, and the others are just the same so well let's create a button now let's learn how to do something oh I already have all this information for my test run okay so I got rid of that so what we had before was just this label that was called label output now let's create a simple button uh, I'll call it BTN. Uh, I don't know. Calculate. Okay. Whoops. Did I not? There you go. Button calculate. And then for the actual text, I'll throw an ampersand followed by calculate. Now you might be wondering, what does the ampersand do that you put in front of the C? What that does is puts a little underline under the C. And when we run the application, uh, we don't see it, but if we hold down the alternate key, uh, it pops up. And if you keep holding it down and press the letter that it's, that's being underlined, it'll execute the code that's associated with that uh, control, which in this case is a button. So that's really, really cool. So alternate C would execute the calculate. So then I'll need to move that down a little bit, and let's create a text box really quickly. And that will fetch whatever information the user types in. So the user can type whatever they'd like in there. So we'll rename that text input. And that's about it. So let's double click this calculate. So now the calculate click event has been uh, created. So we'll put all our code in here. So now we're going to start off by creating our try catch. Try then catch and and yeah that's about it so I'm now gonna copy all of this copy and I'm gonna paste it right there but we don't have to really worry about this uh, in a moment or I'll, I'll explain it a little later how we're gonna be working with that so that's buttons text boxes and well let's get into the uh, different types of operators so we're gonna be going through both assignment and arithmetic in other words math operators so I type in assignment operators. I hope I spell everything correctly. Yeah, I know I didn't. Assignment. I don't even know why. And arithmetic operators. And okay, so all our code will go within the try. So let's create a simple variable. I'll call it an integer. And there's a reason. You know what? I'll start as a double. And I'll call it what should I call it? Input. So that's whatever the user types in the text box. So this is very interesting. Not only might you, might you be wondering how to fetch information from a text box that someone types in, but at the same time, if someone types something into a text box, wouldn't it be a string regardless whether they or not they put letters or numbers? That's true. It's always a string. So at the same time as getting that information, how do you convert it? Well, this is how you go about doing it. So first we'll type in an equals, and that's our first assignment operator. So I'm going to digress for just a moment, put an equal sign, 
and basically this assignment operator sets whatever's on the left with whatever's on the right. The only things I believe will ever be on the left side will either be a variable or an object or a control uh, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, uh, you'll never have just a number by itself or a string on its by itself. Like you'll never go, you know, string whatever is equal to something. That that just doesn't work. So we'll go input equals, and then we're going to type in convert dot, and then see all these twos that we have. So for convert to a double, we just type in two double. Um, integers are weird. They have all these uh, 16, 32, 64s. You don't have to worry about what those mean or anything like that, but these are just all the different to string. We've done two string already, even. So, but yeah, we're going to be going to, to a double. So I'll click tab, and then inside this, and then a semicolon. And then inside this will goes, goes the name of the text box that we want to get the information from. So text, input, dot text. And that's it. Now we have the information. Um, so other than a uh, variable going on the left side, we can also have a control. So I'll type in label output dot text is equal to input dot to string. So now we have to convert it all the way back to a string. If I click save, now let me show you the error, the this try catch in uh, in motion. So first of all, let me type in a valid number like 56. There's 56 popped up correctly. What if you don't put in a number and you try to convert it into a double? If I put in a letter, it's going to try converting it into a double. It's not a number. Oh, oops. This is uh oh, that's not even a good uh This isn't even good right here. This is not a number. And that uh, noise that you heard coincides with whatever icon you give it. So if we go whoops. So if I go for like a uh, information, it should sound a lot nicer. So if I run it and let's leave it empty instead this time because that's still invalid. See, information it was a lot nicer. So this is not a number. Oops. And but we want to keep that as an error, of course. There. We, oh, is that right? Nope. Um, and yeah, and don't forget, there's also the finally, which um, any code that you put in the finally will always execute no matter what. Um, so I don't understand the point in it. Leave a comment if, like, if you've had a teacher that tells you what they've used it for or something, that'd be pretty cool. I'd like to read that because I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to digress from the assignment operators for a moment and go into the arithmetic. So it's straight up math. You have the plus, the minus, the asterisk is multiplication forward slash is division uh, so I'm going to show you some of these in, in motion so I'm going to get rid of the to stream because I don't want to convert the input to a string right away because I want to do some math to it so I'll put some parentheses around this and we could just declare another variable and then do the math and then just put that variable here but nah um, so let's go input plus uh, what, do we, what do we want to add Let's throw in, I don't know, two. Not much of a difference. Then two string. So like save all, and then run this. If I put in, I don't know, 49. What's 49 plus two? 51. Really? Oh, I guess so. Okay, so um, let's then go into minus. I click save. I press F5. And, whoops. I put in 45. 45 minus 2 is 43. Multiplication. I click save. I'll put in, let's say, 13. 13 times 2 is 26. And division. I'll click save. Press F5. And let's throw in, let's say, 36. 36 divided by 2 is 18. Now, this is, there's something really weird I want to show you. I'm going to go back to the minus. What do you think will happen if I put in, let's say, 1 right here? 1 minus 2 is negative 1, isn't it? So, do you think C-sharp supports negative numbers? Wow, let's see. Oh, it does. Look at that. So, that's something to take, in, take uh, into account, that it also supports negative numbers. So, going back to division. Whoops. 
Don't want to show you that one yet. Spoilers. If I type in, let's say, 17... Oops. Oh, look, it supports decimals too, but we kind of already knew that. So 8.5 is half of 17. But what, what if we use... Yep. What if we use integers? So we'll go int 32. If I click save, and let's go, let's say, 17 again. We just get 8. Uh, that's because integers don't, they, they don't read decimals and everything that comes after them. It stops once it hits the decimal, which also means it doesn't see what's in the tenths place, which means it can't round, because 17.5 should round up to 8, uh, um, to 9, uh, 8.5, excuse me, should round up to 9, right? But it does not show us 9. It does not round. So I just want you to bear that in mind. So, now next important, especially when you're dealing with integers, will be the modulus. So, what does the modulus do? Or just mod, M-O-D. Uh, it's the percentage sign. What that does is it returns the remainder. So I'll show you a very simple example. So I'll change this to 1,000 and I'll run this application again and if I type in 3456 oh come on and I click uh, calculate um, how many how many thousands are there in 3456 well, there's only three right so our first remainder will be 456 and there it is now let's go back to something simple like um, I don't know three let's, uh, yeah I want to do a little more complicated in JavaScript or Visual Basic, I don't know what it was. I did a simple 7 mod 2, but let's do a different one. Let's do 13. No, let's do 14. So now we get 2. So allow me to explain this. Um, so we have 3 here. How many times does 3 go into 14? Well, we have 3, 6, 9, 12. But we can't go to 15. We can only go to 14. So how much is remaining? remaining once you get to 12? only 2, right? To get from 12, we have to add 2. So, it's just remainders. That's how that works. So, it's nothing too bad. And remember, you can always put something else in there, like 11, still 2. If you go 10, it should only be 1, because it can get to 9, and it's only one more. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I didn't show you you could click buttons more than once. So, that's all your arithmetic operators that I would like to show you. And now comes these, um, some more assignment operators. We have the plus equals minus equals, times equals, divide equals, and mod equals. Now, I don't really have time to show you all these, but they all do the same thing. Basically, it's a shorthand for adding um, additional information to something. So if I throw in, let's say, I don't know, um, what if I want to go input equals than whatever input originally was plus 5? That's great, right? But this is very unprofessional. You'll never do it like this. Never do it like that. Just go plus equals 5. And it will save the original value and add 5 to it. So if I press F5 and I run this, if I put in, let's say, 45, I click calculate. Oh, whoops. I just want it to be input right here. Dot two string. And if I throw in, uh, I'll go 34. Um, it took that 34, then added 5 to it, and then printed it as 39. So that's really, really cool. So plus equals, and you know, you can put another variable here if you'd wish. So, yeah, a whole bunch of different things that you can do. Uh, now, there's one last thing I'd like to show you really quickly, and that's how to close your application. So I'll just copy this button just to save time. And I'll call it btn close and down here at the bottom and I can show you how to use the ampersand again um, so close so notice how I already have an ampersand under the C here I can't repeat that I have to put it um, next to a different letter so I'll put it next to the L instead so now the L will be underlined so anyways how do you go about closing it so now we're in our close so this was our calculate right here this this whole guy in between these curly braces so now we're in our close so how do you close this well, in order to close this, type in this. This will refer to this form. Dot, then... See how you can uh, you can access a whole bunch of stuff. Like, you can access the variables that are in here. 
um, the different objects we have, like the text input, uh, just just everything, the variables. What variables did we make? Input. So um, there's uh, so yeah, just a whole bunch of different things. But in order to close, just type in close. As such, click save, and I press that five. If I click close, it closes it, and then allow me to hold alternate L, because that's what it was. So alternate L, and now it's gone. So that's cool. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.